for young people either consciously or subconsciously to say, if that's all that Judaism's got to offer, count me out. <coughs> and by the way, it's not true. <coughs> if I can refer for a moment to possibly the ultimate lesson plan that we ever have, which is the Pesach Seder, which is a <coughs> lesson which incorporates experiential learning, incorporates food, which is always a winner, albeit funny food, incorporates a family setting and a dialogue between generations. And in the text of the Haggadah, we have a very profound lesson for teachers. And the lesson is this, Rabbi Gamliel says, Anyone who has not mentioned three things has not fulfilled his obligation. If you want to tell the story of what it means to be a Jew, if you want to get that message across from parent to child, you need to mention three things. And going out of order a bit, one of them is Mara. One of them is about bitterness. And we tell the story of how we suffered. But that's not the only thing we talk about. Because we also talk about the matzah. And the matzah represents the chibazon, the rushing out, the exodus from Egypt in all its glory. And so we have the tragedy, but we also have the triumph. And we tell our children that there have been hard times, there have been terrible times, and your family and your ancestors have been part of that. And that is something that you have to be conscious of, and that's something you have to be appreciative of. But we also need to tell them about the triumph. You know, even before 1948, we didn't always lose wars. There were some times that we won them. And apart from the military successes, which admittedly are few and far between, what about our cultural successes? What about our literary successes? What about the achievements that we've created for ourselves despite 2,000 years of exile? What about what we've given to the world? Let's tell our children about that as well. And the third answer, which is often given, consciously or subconsciously, which I would suggest is not sufficient, is be Jewish because of Israel. Or rather, if Jewish identity is too hard for you, too threatening, too challenging, let's give you a Zionist identity, an Israel identity, instead. Now again, I have to make clear what I'm saying. <coughs> of course, and I hope this will come through later as well in what I'm going to say, of course Israel is not only an important part of Jewish life, it is the center of Jewish life. And to be a Jew today <coughs> needs a cognizance an awareness of the centrality of Jewish life, centrality of Israel in Jewish life, and how what comes out of Israel politically, socially, culturally, literally, is so critical to the development of Jewish life throughout the world. And indeed, let's go further, we also have to tell our young people if they want to live a full Jewish life, if they want to fully be part of the destiny of the Jewish people, there's only one place in which they can do that, and it's not Melbourne. But to say that you should be, your Jewish identity should depend on your connection to the state of Israel is something different entirely. And it's something, I think, which is short-term and even counterproductive. I think there are many educational philosophies which rely on this principle of saying, if Judaism is too hard, let's just give them Israel instead. And apart from a philosophy there which lacks an underpinning and hence ultimately doesn't make sense, and apart from the fact that it doesn't answer the ultimate question, I can support Israel, but I can still marry out, there's another problem with it, which I think we have to be very aware of in our particular day. It's nice getting together in this Zionist Federation framework. It's nice seeing Madrachim wearing chutzot and so on, and we all feel very warm and fluffy and, and connected to Israel. But we have to remember that for a lot of our young people, a lot of our not-so-young people, they don't feel it like we do. They don't feel the connection to Israel that we do. And their connection to Israel, which is already fragile, is under serious threat. If we listen carefully, we can hear it here as well. Jews turning away from Israel. It starts as taking a more moderate stance, and then it becomes J Street, and then it becomes independent Australian Jewish voices. And it is no longer unthinkable to think but there are parents in our schools, there are students in our schools who do not feel like connected to Israel in any of the same ways that we do, and even, God forbid, they feel opposed to Israel. 
And it's not surprising, really, with the drip drip of the media coming from their televisions and their newspapers every day, it's not surprising that we're not able to inoculate themselves then against that in the way that we need to. And therefore I say that if we make their Jewish connection dependent on their Israel connection, then their Jewish connection, their Jewish identity and identification becomes as vulnerable and as fragile as their Israel connection. That we need them to feel the centrality of Israel in Jewish life. We need them to love Israel, but we need much, much more than that. So, having gone through three answers, which I would say I think are insufficient, what is the answer? Well, the truth is I don't really know. And I haven't got a magic wand that will put it all right. But I want to say two things, and then I want to say a third, about ideas that I think... Oh, well, ideas <laughs> that I think we need to focus on and we need to convey to our students. And the two ideas are this. That being Jewish is beautiful and being Jewish is something that is true. Now, I'm not here to talk about methodology. I'm not here to talk about pedagogy. But I would like to explore these two ideas and then we can all think how we can convey them to our students. We spend a lot of our time complaining about being Jewish, complaining about Jewish life, <coughs> complaining about having to queue in clicks, complaining about the lack of this and the lack of that. We spend a lot of our time talking about Israel, which we love, but we complain about it. And we have to think of how our young people, our own children and our students are picking up on the messages that we're giving out. And with that, I say, perhaps we don't spend enough time talking about what is beautiful about being Jewish. Albert Einstein said, I thank my lucky stars that I was born Jewish because of three things. Because of a passion for social justice, because of a love of learning, and because of a fierce desire for independence. So let me look at those three things. Albert Einstein was a pretty good guy to quote in this respect. He talked about a passion for justice. And let's remember and let's remind our students that it's no coincidence that at the forefront of every progressive movement in the last hundred years have been Jews. From Marxism to anti-apartheid to civil rights in America, it's been Jews at the forefront. And why is that? It's because of the values that we have, which where we genuinely feel concerned for others. Why is that that across the world, Jews give far more to non-Jewish charities than non-Jewish communities? And even if you extract the socio-economic aspects out of that, you still find the same statistic. It's true. We have a passion for justice. We have a passion that is expressed in different ways for caring for other people. Let's talk about that more. And the next thing that Einstein said was that Jews love learning. You know, we laugh sometimes that of the top schools in the BCE results and the HSC results, the Jewish schools are always up there at the top. I think all the Jewish schools in Melbourne came in the top 3% of all schools in Victoria. And sometimes we need to stand back and say, apart from patting ourselves on the back and, and spreading out the good news to our parents, what a ridiculous figure that is. We're 0. Point something percent of the population, and yet all our schools are in the top 3%. And that's not just because of our pushy parents, it's not just because we're such brilliant schools, which we are. <laughs> It's because there's something about a love for learning. A love for learning for its own sake. And unfortunately it's become so utilitarian, it's all about an enter score, it's all about getting university. But if you strip all that away, you will still find that passion for learning, that passion for understanding the world, that passion for improving ourselves intellectually. And that's Jewish. And we should talk about it more. said was a fierce desire for independence. Now, sometimes that's translated as we're all dafkinics. We all want to be a bit different. We don't want to fit in. We don't want to queue. But let's look a bit for a broader picture. I said that 
just because we've been around for a long time. That's not itself a reason to stay Jewish. But it's an indicator of something else. Why is it that if you look back three and a half thousand years and you look forward today, there are only two nations that were there then and are here today. One is the Chinese, which had the advantage of large numbers and a concentrated landmass, and the other is us. If you look at every other ethnic group, every other nationality from three and a half thousand years ago, they've all disappeared. If you're lucky, you'll find them in museums or on Wikipedia, but the rest have gone. And we're here. And that's because we always wanted to be different. And that's because we were always prepared to stand up and say, you have your way, but we're prepared to be different. We're prepared to stand up for what we believe to be right. Sometimes that's been very hard, and sometimes there's been a price to pay. We're called Hebrews. We're called Ivrim. And some say that's because Abraham stood on one side of, our, of the river, and the whole story we talked about in my session this morning of Abraham smashing the idols, that Midrash which is so well known where Abraham is the ultimate iconoclast is about the Jews saying whatever is the accepted mores and beliefs of society if we believe differently then we will continue to act differently. That has been our hallmark and that is why we have survived. And that is why we stood against And that is why we stood against the juggernaut of Hellenism and the juggernaut of Christianity and the juggernaut of, Muslim, of the Islam in the Muslim world. And we are still here. And above all, that is why we have created for ourselves the greatest miracle of modern times that has never happened before. That a nation leaves its homeland as in, in its exile for 2,000 years 